Hey Bino, it's Bino. Hey folks, it's Bino. Hey, check this out. We're gonna enlarge this picture and see how long it doesn't stay up there because they don't want us to see the horizon that much. So oh, just, maybe it's just a software glitch, right? Absolutely not. If I even touch my finger on the pad, it's not gonna let me see. So I've been wanting to zoom in on this stuff. So I'm gonna give you a zoomed in shot of the horizon because it should be able to keep pulling this up and keep zooming that up. And you see how they don't really like you to see it very long. So I'm gonna zoom up a little bit on size here and actually go to 400. And we should be able to get a pretty good blow up of the horizon, as you see there, okay? So we'll just bit through this, okay? I know I'm way too big, but the idea that it kind of shows what I'm trying to show you, which is actual factual. So, and I'll just cover them for the, the whole space agency and everything like that. Well, NASA, I guess, basically, or whoever's in charge of the Mars program. That the only reason, the just idea in case we start seeing little tiny men, right? <laughs> little tiny, uh, you know, Bino has told you that I don't believe in that. So I'll not try to move any there at all. And as you can see, when we were blowing up at 400, what we've seen on the right. So we'll just keep going through here. And as you see, it won't last long when I blow the picture up. It doesn't want you to see it very long. So I'll blow down again. I'm going to save some tape time. So it's he's paying peeky boo with me, but here we go. So you'll be able to take snapshots of this and blow it up. You see, once I give you this, you can take a snapshot of that and blow that up on that horizon up there. Okay. And the other actual factual, what we'll be able to do, I can even just do it on the small scale shot, is actually I'll take you to a picture. Hang on. The reason I got skeptical, well, the number one thing we're going to start watching is this dirt. Okay, we got a map of dirt on here. Okay, now eventually this stuff will probably have an excuse of, well, the wind blew it off or whatever, but we're going to end up, you watch every little speck of dirt on here. So thank God that it got dirty. So we'll be able to watch that dirt, see what the weather's like up on Mars with, uh, okay, I think this is the landing bed or something like that. I'm not positive. But they should be able to get a camera shot from there all the time. Okay. So we'll be able to watch the dirt. It's on the machine. No matter what, I think it's a landing bed, but I'm not positive. Okay. So, and the number one thing is we see that horizon up there that looks really kind of like, I'm like, wow, man. Just all of a sudden right there, and then there's this, and it's like, wow, it's pretty interesting. But when you try to zoom in on it, it's very uninteresting. So. Looks good from afar. We'll find out. Hang on. Anyway, I think it's just very curious why it doesn't let us stay up here very long. So you'll be able to take a snapshot of this and blow it up. Because as soon as I move my cursor, it's going to end up moving and blowing it down. Because I think I'm going to go down here and take a snip shot of that. You see? If I go down on my deal to try to take a snip shot of it, they don't want to let me find out. And I don't believe in Martians, folks. There's nothing out there. Earth is so unique and hiding out in a rabbit hole that I really do not think there's anything out really close in the Milky Way galaxy. It's way out if there's anything out there. And I really do not believe in Martians, folks. I'll stuff one, I'll make, become a millionaire. So we're at the perfect size here that you can blow it up and you can get a nice look at the horizon on Mars there. And if I go down here to try to take a snippet, it goes bye-bye. It won't let me take a snip. Now... We're going to go ahead and go it again, and I'll go with my cursor anywhere else, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, whatever. They think that you could have a snippet up there, I guess, or something like that on your screen. But anyway, you can take a snapshot of my picture in this video and zoom it up, okay? And then you'll get a look at that nice background of Mars there that we have in the dunes, I guess it almost looks like, or something like that. Because the one thing is to watch out is for the colorization that they're doing or something like that. Because basically there's something going on there that basically they don't they have to colorize, I guess, a shot. Which I thought was very unusual that they have to do that. But check it out. Because I'm going to show you there's a scratch on the arm here. Because I was very much into construction, you see. Because I like the black and whites a lot more that made me look at the construction. as like oh, machining and stuff like that of the equipment and stuff of the maze, you know. And then that this is real realistic because there would be little scratch marks, you know. Nothing, everything is perfect. So there's a little scratch mark on the arm. You see that there to the left? Right there. Okay. So the black and whites are kind of cool. Because you get an actual at about like this. 
Then you get in and you get into the pixels once you get in too much. See, I try to look at the sand ourselves. It's not 35 millimeters, see, it's digital pictures. But you can still see that there's a scratch on the arm, but when you go to the other picture, you get glossed over painty perfect, okay? And then I'm wondering how they get this clean because it looks like they did some, their laser testing and stuff like that on that. And that's kind of, and I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not ruining it for anybody because the idea that if they don't let us keep seeing the pictures, then something's up. So we can see the marks that are on the bed too from getting lasered, okay? So then we'll also look at this here. So we'll be able to differentiate between that and that. So you can zoom in and take pictures and look at that. So and I think they end up saying that the rock is only like eight inches or something like that. If I'm even wrong on that, they're saying it's eight foot, but I'm pretty sure they say it's eight inches or something. But it's a very interesting rock. Because even if it's a meteorite or anything like that that landed on there, it's got such a, you know, here, such a square. I mean, it basically looks like a, and I'm not joking, it looks like a pyramid. Hang on. And you go to NASA for the description and stuff like that, but that's the rock we're zooming in on. What I was interested in, it was very interesting looking marks right here that are very clear when you're, when you're looking out of ways, but when you start zooming in on it, the pixels don't. They don't agree too much. It gets all pixely. So, you, when you're looking way out, it looks like there's a very interesting marking right here, right there. Now watch. You just don't get to get a good enough look at it when you zoom in on it. It's about as good as it gets. There is a very distinct little marking right there on the very top of it. The distinct cracks and so forth and so, so such, but it looks better at a far distance. So it's getting to be some interesting stuff on Mars. The pictures, and yeah, it's eight feet as you can see here. And I'll even just zoom in a lot real fast on it here. And as you can see, let me give you the description down here real fast. There it is. Okay. So it's better to blow it off live screen, I guess. So it's always good to zoom in live picture because then it'll look a little bit better. You don't get it pixelated, I guess. So like I say, this is what I was very much interested in looking at. So I'm on live screen, you see, and I'll keep, I'll go into another 800%. And what we'll do is we'll scoot down on that 600%. We're looking at this rock that's supposedly eight point something feet. It's just what took me off is the square, just, just so unusual. We've seen asteroids here on Earth. So this is something up there that looks like it's been, to me, it looks like it's either, you know, I didn't say the word fake, but you guys can say it. But, and also we just get this, look, check this V out there in it. So, very interesting. And that's why I've got some very interesting stuff on the moon that I'm going to show you eventually. But there is very interesting here. I mean, it's almost like they're trying to, Make something up. I'm not putting, gonna psychologically put things in your heads, but you can see this here. Markings of like, you know, it sure looks like two planets, doesn't it? And over here, that's sure a V right there. And then actually, and then I say you gotta do it on live, I guess, because basically when it gets pixelated, it'll go up. So here's live from the site, a very unique, this is straight up from their picture that they've got on there. And then you'll see what they have, I guess it's a digital picture that they get back. So. But you can see that and you'll be able to blow that up as well defined as we can get that they've got it. And also you can see this as I've got it showing to you here. And if we get up to the 800, there's that, that interesting size there. The very interesting corners that are very precise. And I can see why they're so interested in it and then basically here. But then who's trying to give us what for a, another century or something of this is that and that's this. Because I got a bunch of interesting stuff to show you from the moon, folks.
and keep holding out because basically I'm holding out and waiting to see what they're going to show us from the new latest. And then you got this V action here, very distinct V. And then I zoom in more and you can actually see it looks like some kind of inscriptions on there. So I don't want to be any part of showing somebody something for, for centuries, this is that and it's up there. So, but anyway, there's sure a darn interesting rock, very interesting rock to be looking at. And this has basically been given to us by NASA for a picture that'll go down in infamy, right? So, very interesting because it's got like that unusual crust to that side. And I mean, it just basically looks like a rock that's been, but it's just these corners are so, and I mean, it just straight out really looks like a pyramid, straight off. So, it's very, very interesting rock. The angle that it has on it there, people are going to be talking about this forever. And now you're going to be able to zoom in and be more of a talkator because Spino has got you looking and interested in it. So check it out, people. Anyway, this is the picture I downloaded when they say you can download the picture, and I went full picture. So it's a lot more interesting when they first give you what they give you off NASA. You can look this over. You can make pictures of this and zoom in on it and everything like that. It's a lot more interesting how I could really get into this stuff clear and stuff, see that good stuff. A lot better from just blowing up the actual picture. This very interesting stuff on Saturn. Remember I said to keep an eye on Saturn. And then they're giving us this. And then I will take you down to what they say. They and Basically, you can just freeze this. Ethylene on Saturn. Okay, so I'll give you the data on that real fast. There's your article. should be able to have caught all this but just going slow and, and getting this through. You can just freeze it where you want to read it at. That's from space.com staff. And remember, you got to have more than one compound to make ethylene, okay? So C2 and C and H4, basically CH2 equals CH2, but the compound formula is C2 and H4 to make ethylene because when I went to the periodical chart I didn't even really think that I've ever heard of it before so it's a gas okay and then I'm gonna to go to the periodic chart and you're gonna see that you don't have it so you gotta have more than one to make it okay it's actually a product Basically, basically, here's your list of elements, okay? Those are your elements known to man on Earth here. And then you have to put them together to make... And as you see, you don't have that ethylene here. So basically, there's an explosion or something pierced Saturn's lower crust or made its atmosphere do something to produce that, okay? Because it's a gas. Okay, and there, and NASA's tools detect exactly what's there, and that's what they detect was ethanol. So basically, something hit or pierced had to have hit or pierced, and it's basically not a theory; it's an actual factual. So basically, it pierced Saturn, folks. So it's a chemical and it's a gas. So something would have to strike Saturn to make that produce. Okay, it's not just something that's caused by. So something, two matters have to get together to make that gas. Either pierced out of the, the skin of Saturn, you know, it's terra firma, or entered its atmosphere and had the gas in it, okay? And started a basically a huge, as you can go back and read the article, a huge temperature raise. It would be like going from the Antarctic to the desert, okay? On the hottest day of the world, okay? That's what happened on Saturn. So here's a sample, folks. It's taking a sample, which is pretty cool. Okay. So I want to get back to the controller because I want to start it back up so you can see right from the start. But anyway, it's taking a sample. Check out the Earth. Good color shot, right? So what was with the fake photo? Airbrushed photo. So here's the scoop that they took out of the ground. Okay. Got it blown up. And no, they didn't more than likely litter. Just starting to think that there's actually some shiny stuff underneath the soil. 
So we'll see. They'll have all the elements. They'll be able to tell us exactly what the elements are, what they find there.